three as the leading pack comes into view again. And oh dear, the British number one Nelson Davretti is in trouble again and pulls into the pits for repairs. Well, come on then. <laughs> Final request before we shoot you? I'd like to sing a song. What is it? A million green bottles hanging on the wall. A million green bottles hanging on the wall. Thank you very much. Hi there. Well, welcome to Bobby Dabber on the box. Hey, it's good to be back. I'll tell you what, you've got to be fit to do a show like this, I'll tell you. I bought myself one of them bull workers last week. The only trouble is I can't get the lid off the box. <laughs> I'm into jogging now. I've got all the gear. I bought myself one of the tra training shoes, the tracksuit, Adidas. Yeah, Adidas. It's a daft name, isn't it? it sounds like an extra bum. Because <laughs> I like sport, you see. TV, uh, TV shows a lot of sport. Golf's my favourite. I played golf with a German last week. He was useless. Kept going in the bunker. <laughs> Sport's very popular now. I mean, there's darts. I mean, have you seen the players? Haggard faces, coughs, beer bellies, and the men are just as bad. <laughs> Snooker's another game that's become very popular on TV. I watch a lot of snooker. Trouble is, you have to turn the, the volume up when Whispering Tread Low comes on. Have you listen to him? I said, join us at the table. Alex Higgins prepares for you. Know. <laughs> of course, I have all this hoo-ha about drug-taking in snooker. I think it's disgusting me. I mean, what, they've been trying for years to get Steve Davis off a of Horlix, haven't they? <laughs> Football's back on the box. I like football. I'm a Southampton fan. Any football say Any Southampton fans in? Yeah. Good team, then. Be in Europe next year, if there's a war. <laughs> I like meeting all the famous footballers. I met John Bond. Do you know John Bond, the new manager of uh, Birmingham City, is? I met him in a lift last week. I said, going down, he said, looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Brian Clough was in him. He was covered in love bites. Most of them self-inflicted. <laughs> I said, what do you think of football in Birmingham? He said, I think it'll be a very good idea. <laughs> now, Channel 4 is the place to look for minority sports, like basketballs. Have you ever heard a basketball commentary? Have you? And you go straight over now to the basketball. Bounce. Bounce. <laughs> bounce, 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 not a bounce, not a bounce, 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 not a bounce goal. I mean, it's top of it. <laughs> then there's the new one they've introduced, chess. Now, they've spent millions and millions of pounds on bringing coloured television to the cold country, and what do they do? Channel 4 put on the only sport you can play in black and white. <laughs> Mind you, they have bought American football, and that's great. Have you seen the Super Bowl? That's a great show. That, oh, that was marvellous, wasn't it? Hey, the refrigerator. He's one of my favourites. Oh, the padding that he's got on. I'll tell you what, the last time I saw padding like that was in Dynasty. <laughs> I mean, the top half looks like Mr T, and the bottom half looks like Rudolf Nureyev. <laughs> Brings a whole new meaning to that competition. Spot the ball. <laughs> of a lifetime. Claire, Raina and George Michael, if she can catch him. Now, do you remember I told you we were eating last week's couple? Well, we are. Maury O'Hara and Alex Higgins won a super day trip to France. Let's see how they got on. Never been to France. Was it Nice? No, it was Paris. This stupid old bag. <laughs> now, Mary, tell us, cos we're dying to know, aren't we, girls? Did you get on well? Oh yes, and often. <laughs> Alex and I had a lot in common. Yeah, she used to be a nun, and I've got a habit. <laughs> Alex is all right. Not the type of man I'm used to, but we were similar in many ways. Well, me and Mary are only alike in one way. We're both flat-chested. I'm Irish, and he's Irish. I'm a harpist, and so is he, usually. 
she's funny because she kept wanting me to go to the Louvre with her. I asked Alex if he'd like to go and have a look at the motionless, ageless face with the stony eyes and the enigmatic smile. I said I'd seen Steve Davis before. <laughs> Wonderful to see all those lovely sights. Notre Dame, the left bank, the Arc de Trumph. I couldn't get her out of the Folly Bears, yeah. She wanted to go to see that big tower they've got there and climb right to the top. I think it's called the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel? Certainly did. It was a windy day. <laughs> there was one embarrassing moment I remember when Alex saw a big sign in a shop saying crepes, but they chased him out before he'd done too much damage. <laughs> The most, the most embarrassing moment was when we were sitting in the restaurant, right, and the waiter walked over and asked Mary if she'd like a cafe au lait. She said, I didn't know there was a choice. I'll have the coffee first. Oh, you just had a marvellous time, didn't you, both? Yeah. yeah. Now, Mary, tell us all, because we're dying to know how we go. Did Alex behave himself? Oh, yes. He only threw up once, and that was over the back of the ferry. Mind you, he was standing at the front at the time. And what about Murray, Alex? She's got everything a man could ask for. <laughs> You've only got an ask and all. Now, let me ask you both, cos we're dying to know, aren't we, girls? Yes. Does your day affect you both? Oh, not at not all. At all. <laughs> New Drofko, the dandruff shampoo. We washed one half of a person's hair in ordinary shampoo and the other half in new Drofko. After three weeks, at the side where the ordinary shampoo was used, the dandruff was still there. At the side using Drofko, the dandruff was still there as well, but it was a hell of a lot cleaner. New Drofko, a cleaner, shinier dandruff. All these carpets must go. All these rugs must go. All these linos must go. Why? Because they're rubbish. <laughs> Well, it's the man that perms his hair. And he wears coloured shirts. And he spends all of his time with other men. And he kisses other men. And he takes showers with other men, and they all enjoy it. <laughs> Welcome back to Junk, and straight away, here's the results of last week's Junk competition. OK, we ask you, if you remember rightly, we ask you to give us a missing word in these three song titles. They were, all you need is, I'm not in, and I'm going to dress you up in my. Well, of course, the answer we were all looking for was, of course, a love, and not knickers, like a lot of you know they suggested. But uh, congratulations, Mr Phillips of Leshworth. Your prize is on the way. And it's um, uh, the new Charlie LP, the one where she sings one long, boring song for 40 minutes, and uh, they've divided into three-minute segments, which makes you think there's 12 new tracks. All kind of stuff. And uh, one on the subject of uh, Charlie, if S-A-D-E is pronounced Charlie, then surely Slade will be called Slade. Interesting, that one, isn't it? There we go. Well, you know, the British record charts are notoriously unpredictable. The music content is invariably varied, and never more so than earlier on this year, when a minor sensation occurred with the entry of Walking in the Air from the cartoon film The Snowman, sung by young Welsh boy Ala Jones. And we're delighted that he's able to join us today. <laughs> Thank you, Muriel. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, Alice, it's been quite a year for you, hasn't it? Oh, yes, Muriel. It's been a lovely year. I've, I've had a lot of gold and silver discs. And, of course, the opportunity to sing with a lot of wonderful people. Oh, yes. Well, Alice, a question that obviously intrigues a lot of people is that you have this wonderful treble voice and you're 14 years old. Yes. How long is it going to be before your voice breaks? Well, it's almost impossible to say, really. I mean, I've been very lucky to have it for so long. But I, I suppose it could happen almost any time. And when it does happen, is that going to mean a lot of changes for you? Well, it won't affect me as a person, but that's what I sing in a lot to change a bit, Mary Ann. Oh, yes. You mean you might have to change your repertoire? Oh, yes, yes, so almost certainly. Mary. I, mean, I won't be able to sing Oh, for the wings of a dove anymore. That's for Satan. Uh, I'll be singing Old Man River, and uh, I was born under a wandering star, isn't it? Oh, so yes. it won't mean the end of the golden voice of Alla Jones? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll never stop singing, Muriel. I mean, it's been part of my life for too long, you see. I'll just have to learn to adjust a bit, uh, yes. 
Well, tell me, how do you look after that beautiful, clear voice of yours? Do you have to be extra careful? <laughs> oh, actually, actually, you've got to look after your voice. And your voice will look after itself, won't it, boy? <laughs> well, Alan Jones, until your voice does break, we wish you all the best. Oh, thank you very much, Muriel. Hey, you're not a bad-looking bird, are you? I quite fancy you. Why don't you come back to my mar and dance, please? They've gone away from anyway, the weekend, like... From come Alan on, Jones. Muriel, I'll tell you, I'm up to... I'm up to... I'm up to... Uh, sorry, I was a bit late. Um, uh, my body was just telling me something. It was telling me I shouldn't have had that curry last night. <laughs> OK, and now it's time to go straight over to the other side of the studio for some of this. Uh, no, no, apparently not. Um, it's it's uh, something else. <laughs> Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not complaining at all. Good. It's just that it's the first bridal suite I've come across that's got bunk beds. Yeah. <laughs> Here, Shane, have you heard Des O'Connor's got a protest record out? Do me a favour, Des O'Connor, a protest record? Yep, it's true. Des O'Connor, a protest record? Well, everyone I've played it to has protested till I've taken it off. <laughs> In this week's Celebrity Chat, we talk to Angie of EastEnders and ask why they named the Queen Vic after a gay chest rub. And we ask Angie about her performance. Is three times a week enough? I've had a lot to contend with recently. I mean, with Den. I mean, I know he knocks off other women, right? He's the only bloke who can fill up a coach to go for a trip down Lover's Lane. And don't tell me he's on the line to the brewery every time he picks up the phone. If that were true, we'd have more in our cellar than Oliver Reed's got in his zip flask. <sighs> if it weren't for the darts team, I think I'd top myself, I would. Managing the darts team has kept me going. Mind you, there was a time when I used to manage the old rugby team as well. Know what I mean? But I'm not as young as I used to be. Also in this week's Celebrity Chat, the Brian Tilsley Toolbox. <laughs> the Brian Tilsley Toolbox contains everything you need to be a successful motor mechanic on Coronation Street. <laughs> the Brian Tilsley Toolbox and the companion Gail Tilsley Toolbox. Now you can look just like Brian and Gail. <laughs> this amazing offer is in this week's Celebrity Chat.
want us to come back when you're less busy? I'm not busy at all. It's just the music's still playing. Ah, that's better now. Uh, what's on your mind? We need to know what's happening. No one's told us what's going on. Yeah, I mean, we're six minutes into the program and we still don't have a storyline. So? Well, we just thought it might be more interesting if we... Oh, shoot. What's the matter? I got the titles coming right up over my face again. When are you guys gonna stop complaining? I got the director's name over my face. You don't hear me moaning, do you? Can, can, can we get on with it? Oh, it's all right for you. You never get any names across your face. Oh, Sprock, it's right. Let's get on with it. Captain, here's that file you asked for. Can we get on with the important stuff? Sure. You get to fire 500 rounds without reloading, you run across eight car parks without getting shot at, and you wreck six cars without getting a scratch. No, 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 the important stuff. Like, what clothes are we wear? Well, you had 10 changes throughout the program. All designer labels? Natural. Well, you have to sit there in the same filthy suit. I gotta make you guys look good. Yeah, what about the music? Well, we got six new tracks. There's uh, Phil Collins, Madonna, U2, Huey Lewis, and Brian Adams for the car chase. Oh, no! Brian Adams is for fight. You know, when I get smacked into that pile of cardboard boxes, yeah. you know as well as I do, car chases is Phil Collins and the Eurythmics. But we don't have known your rhythmics this week. What? Get my agent on the phone. Captain, here's that file you asked for. <laughs> you haven't even told us what the goddamn plot is. Nobody's interested in the plot. When are you guys gonna understand that the fast cars, the clothes, the music, the lavish census makes this program? You get a couple of cops in the middle of everything and the series can't fail. Yeah, like Starsky and Hutch, Cagney and Lacey. Exactly. But more up to date. But surely, if we're gonna be more up to date, we need a flash car or a, a flash helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. We're not talking Knight Rider or Airwolf here. This is reality. Captain, here's that file you asked for. <laughs> surely we need some kind of a plot. No, of course not. You got your love interest, you got your car chases. You got your blazing ride between you two and me, and you got your shootout down at the docks, and then we all come back here and sit around the coffee machine, and we're all friends at the end. I mean, we only got an hour. There's no time for a goddamn story. Good cap. That's okay. But I don't believe it. They'll be running those captions till the end of the program. At least put it on the honky for a change. Thanks. Okay, Captain. Come on. We better get moving. There's no rush, fellas. Why is that? They're just bringing up the first lot of commercials. I don't believe it. It's on me again. <laughs> well, I think, I think, I think it's made of grass, and birds sometimes use it to build their nests. And when it's cut, it looks like it's been cut by a great big pair of edge trimmers. <laughs> uh, da, 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 that's not really me, no, sorry, no, no. that, that, uh. Well, you could try that enough. one. What's this here? Uh, weasels ate my flesh. Yeah, it's really horrible. Yeah, no, 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 it's not really me. I always have it sort of all blood first, it's all gut rigid. Oh, oh the blood I can't even look at the cover of this one. Let's have a look here. Uh, driller killer. Yeah. No, 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 I want something more of that. Horrible. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. Well, I'm not really supposed to give you this one, so don't let on, right? But... Right. All about a dead body. Oh yeah. That's cut up into little bits oh, yeah. and boiled in a plastic bag. Oh, oh yeah. What is it? Robert Carrier's cookery course. <laughs> and now tonight's special guest, Barry Manilow. I write the songs that make my fans all swoon with clever words that rhyme like moon and June. With crappy tunes like this, I can't go wrong. I write the songs, I write the songs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome somebody I met in a swimming pool, and I thought was a shark, but she was swimming on her back. Barbara Spicer! I sing songs to people around the world. I start on WhatsApp dark and funny glow. I hold some notes 
Not the songs or voice that makes us the people's choice. It's not the lack of hair or winning smile. Not the way we swing our hips or the sounds that cross our lips. It's that extra something sticking out of mind. We've got big hooters, you can see them here. Mine's just like Concord. Mine's like South and Pier. We've kissed each other, but we can't get close. We got the nose, we got the nose. I grow a big mustache, but I'm afraid. The hair won't grow because it's in the shade. It's really dreadful when we've called because we got the schnoz, we got the schnoz. And my sound's not from the Bronx, it's from way inside my conk. Shall I blow it cause I'm nearer it than you? And I guess my ideal suitor wouldn't need to have a hooter. Well, you're right because you've knows enough for two. But we're successful and we just can't lose. If we could pick our nose, it's these we choose. We'll just keep entertaining, even though. Strides and then me get up your nose. We got the nose. We got the nose. We got the notes, we got the comedy with Bobby Davro next Saturday night at the earlier time, 7 o'clock.